Good morning YouTube and welcome to day whatever it is because I lost count and also welcome to Ramsey, glorious capital of the north and location of many really nice viewing spots, chief among them maybe and this one here, Parliament Square, where the bikes come along the straight, hit the brakes hard before turning right and then up towards the mountain. By far not the only spot, so today's footage is all about what it's like to spectate from Ramsey. Maybe wander through some of the pubs, show you some of the viewing spots. Someone wanted to see May Hill. I'm going to try and squeeze that in. And Ramsey is nice because you can walk quite easily between a lot of the viewing spots. So I'm going to try and show you that. As usual, the distances that I do walk, I've parked the car up for the day. So everything I do today is walking. Um, I will do well, most of it today. There's one location I might try for a race too. But most of it is walking. I'll put the instructions in the description for Google Maps. So that's it. Let's go and enjoy Ramsey. So I'm going to keep the commentary down again for the day as I often try. But just a quick note, if you are wanting to watch from Parliament Square, be early. It's a very, very popular spot. And as you can see, people are already lining up. But still, the roads are still open. It's 10 minutes to road closure. So be early or be really important and watch from Town Hall. Look at him up there. He was also a hugely popular member of the racing community and he will remain in the hearts of us all. Our thoughts are with his family and all those who were close to him. And today, we race for our own.
Still have 40 minutes to go until the sidecar race, so time to give out some more free postcards. Thirty minutes to go to the start of the sidecar race. The roads, of course, are closed. In my rush this morning, I forgot my big ladder, so I went into Jack stores in town. Bought where is it? There, that little thing for a tenner. So you can still, you know, buy something in town here if you want to have a better view from the back. So the plan now is to show you a couple of different positions in Ramsey. When I worked for North One years ago, when we filmed it, uh, we actually covered Ramsey, so I know some of the position moves that we did between laps. The sidecars are a little slower, so they're perfect for that kind of thing. I will start with showing you May Hill, which someone I think requested. It is a beautiful sweeping corner, very recommended to come here. And then I will work my way down towards Parliament Square and maybe Petrol Station and see where we end up. So there's three laps to play with and I'm gonna just try and get you some sidecar footage from different positions. And then after that, I will try and move for the for the second race i will probably try and move up to the gooseneck if it's not too busy and show you that and i was the course car going by 30 minutes to racing and another one
so that was the sidecar race first race of today from ramsey three different positions again i'm going to stick the google maps thingies in the description so if you want to move between laps while in ramsey you can do so we went from mayhill down to parliament square the other side and then parliament square the opposite side so a bit of a variety Beautiful. But I got it was just well the gentleman's just purchased one, so Oh, so you can buy them all. Yeah. The the uh, I'll give I'll just give you a little list of who the riders are. I know it yeah, I'm just gonna put the sign up outside the exhibition, but I've been busy oh, okay. already. Um I'll, I'll photograph show outside is Agostini, but that's just mm -hmm. a photograph uh, we put there. Um, the other paintings, they're all named who they are. And this is done by a different artist, a guy called John Hancock. You can just see through the cellophane that fabulous picture of uh, Mike Halewood. Just wrapping it up. <laughs> I'm wrapping it up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can have a picture of that if you want. Fantastic. They are fabulous paintings. They are indeed. So if someone who's not on the island wants to buy them, how would they do it? Well, do you have you, a, I, I can give you his details. I'll give you one of his business cards. And you think you'll do, you'll do mail. I'll give, you, I'll give you their cards. Yeah, if I, if I take a snap of the cards, then I can share it. it the, and then whoever's yeah. not here can, can yeah. buy it. Yeah, Let's yeah. do that. I'm just trying to guess the location. That's, that's William Dunlop. Is it a particular corner on the course? Uh, Can't be Milne Town, because that's a left-hander, no, isn't it? No, right hand. I could, I could find out from where it is. Um, they're very vague to see them when you think of it, it, it you know. That's mountain, obviously. Yes, yeah. it'll be the mountain. Yeah, that's probably... I well, like it could be any see. edge, but... Any <laughs> closer, yeah. yeah. He does landscapes as well, so I, these are on the TT course. So I put these up just to show people, and there's an amazing one here, looking down from the Craig Bar. That's looking down. The fellow's in Bay Marshall's just here, mm. and this has been taken over by new owners. And she keeps bringing all this food out for the Marshalls. He said he's put a, all this weight he's put on, you know, cakes, biscuits. And you can see it's just gone down to the Craig Bar pub there as well. Beautiful. These are prints we've got. I'll share the, so this, these two artists, right? So Paul Parker and John Hancock. And I had a new young artist come in. You, you'll like this. Well, look at that. Look up close to it. Oh, this is the original cool. picture, but he's only selling the prints of it. So you can oh, think okay. that there, yeah. And he's done another one. And I've just been told that it's the, a Motorhead uh, album cover. It's well cool. Oh, it's fabulous. And this one, he did this one here as well. This, this one here. Um, this is Renzo Pasolini. I had a guy in the other day, a German gentleman. He's, bought, he's got this by, a replica of this. They, they made 12 of these. And, he, and, he, and he, he was desperate for a photograph. So I phoned a friend of mine. And um, I got the photograph. He got this photograph. 1960s of Pasolini on the Benelli, and this this is Dave Johnson, Dave or Johnson, Australian, right? And this was taken this year. And he, he, he actually stays. I'm not trying to name drop, but the last couple of years he's been staying with my niece. So I'm hoping he's going to come in, in between and the races. Sign it. Sign it. Yeah. It's an, this is this is an amazing photograph. That, that's touching that pad on that. It's nice. That's bungalow, isn't it? That's it a bungalow, I would, I would say so. Yeah. It's a fabulous photograph of them. It's funny how you can recognise places just by... One little thing. Yeah, one little thing tells it. This, we're struggling to recognise this, though. I think somebody thought it was the 33rd mile. I would have though. said 33rd, yeah. But, but we might have it exaggerated is. the rocks a bit. But then again, mm. they might have been changed. Well, there aren't many sharp corners like that on the mountain. No. 
That's the only one it could be, we think. Mm. To ask the artists, well, let me share their details. Yeah, thanks. This is a picture of one of the Manx boats arriving in arriving in Douglas, one of the Manx ferries. Is that the old lady of mine? Yeah, in Rough Sea. Yeah. Uh, um, lady, all look similar, isn't it? Or oh, Mona's. It's a Mona's, Mona's Queen. Could be a you, you photograph and blow it up, maybe. Yeah, it's one of Because I used to work on the Lady of Man. Would you want to be on here. that? It yeah. wouldn't bother you if you were, if you sailed on it. I worked on the Lady in the Seas like that. Did you? Yeah. yeah. It's fine because we used to have the crew cabin at the back. Yeah. And you just strap yourself into your bunk. And right you have down. a seat belt and just sleep like a baby. It rocks you to sleep. It's great. Bridge, 1937. That's what it's like now. Oh. oh my gosh. So I did all the paintings for these. That wrapping paper is really good. Wrapping paper is not yet. I'm just bringing it in, putting, making the donation to the hall. And um, that was for, I painted that on polystyrene. Can I buy some of that paper? Of course you can. I'll put, another yeah. I'll put some more money in. <laughs> I'll just roll these up for you. Yeah. Well, if you just, if you write your, your address okay. or your website on something, then this, I'll, I'll share it. I stopped selling me stuff online. Okay. But if people just, email you there, you can... They email. People just contact me and my stuff is in shops and things like that as well. Okay. I have but a I lot of them. viewers who are abroad, so... Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Facebook. My, I'll just put my, I'll put my name on Facebook. Yeah, that's a good idea. People know Facebook. He does your design work for you when you do art. Mm. Uh, he's a great guy called Bob Doughty and people have been trying it on, getting their photographs. I mean, look at it. It's amazing. Bob Dowsey, 1951, 1952, 1953, Manx Grand Prix. And the Doughty name, you see it on the island a lot. Mm. Doughty's, it, it's, it's, they do haulage and things as well. But it's a fabulous, it's a, I mean, look at what it is. It's not much protection, is it? No protection. Somebody just didn't think, they think it's cork. There's it's cork there. inside it, cork inside it. But it must have a hard outside. Mm. It must have been a resin at the time, 50s. You want to try it on? No, I'm... <laughs> I can put it on. Let's do it. It fits me, alright. See, it fits you alright. <laughs> right, I have to head off. The race is starting. Yeah, yeah, I'm good to you. Well, thanks. We'll be talking to you then. So nice to meet you. And yeah. I'll share your details. So. That's fantastic. Thanks very much. It's great to see you. <laughs> and a good story about being on the boat, being strapped in. <laughs> I'll see you later. Cheers. Thanks, thanks very much then. Now it is an hour before the next race starts and I want to try and change positions and see if we can squeeze in at the Gooseneck. And here we are at the Gooseneck with good time to spare. It took me about, what, 20 minutes to get here. The biggest issue at the Gooseneck is the road leading to it. It's the back road. So you take the coast road out of Ramsey and then you turn right and it's a really narrow road and it's very, very busy. Once you reach the Gooseneck on a bike, it's pretty easy. There's plenty of parking. Someone actually charges five quid to park in the field which fine, I guess, fair enough. It's very popular. Uh, car can also park there. I hope I can get back out because it's like this angle, but we'll see. So this is the Gooseneck. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of maybe the first lap or so of the next race up here because it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Smile, you'll be in tonight.
uh, sector timing point. When we're looking at from the helicopter shot, the riders weave around the road. What are you seeing in? second or third on the road at the moment. Dean Harrison out in front on the road and it's been here look for it from the moment of first. So I'm escaping after just one lap. I hope you like that little look at the gooseneck. But the reason I'm leaving early is A, I was parked really precariously and I just wanted to make sure I can get out before anyone who could push me out leaves. But B, it's extremely busy up here, especially on a day like this. Look at the weather. And yeah, I didn't want to get trapped in the rush after the, the fourth lap. Super, super, super popular place, super beautiful place. If you're on a motorbike, not a problem to go there, plenty of parking. Just be a little bit careful that field that I showed you where you park. If it's been wet, if it's been raining, that can turn into a proper mud fest. So just be wary of that. If it looks wet or the ground looks damp or it's been raining, I'd prefer to park on the road and maybe walk five or 10 minutes. There's plenty of space towards it. Also, I'm gonna put the coordinates, of course, in the description so you find the back road. It's very easy. You follow the coast road to Ramsey and there's even a sign going uh, left towards Gooseneck back road. So that's it from the Gooseneck here. I'm just gonna get out of here before the masses try and uh, follow me. Uh, I will try and show you at least one more thing today, so let's see if that works. See you in a bit. So while everyone is busy watching the racing, I'm going to use that moment of peace on the rest of the island to show you this place, another true TT and Isle of Man institution, Murray's Motorcycle Museum. If you are on the Isle of Man for TT or just even outside of TT, this is a must visit place next to the other exhibition at Manx Museum and of course the museum in Derby. So follow me, let's have a look. Yeah. 
process uh, for laps. We're just having a quick look at your times there, Jen. How did you do? Of course, no TT video or visit to the Isle of Man would be complete without a look at this place, the famous Ferry Bridge, which, if you follow my channel and have watched some of my other videos, you will know isn't actually the real Ferry Bridge, at least not if you ask some locals. The real one is a bit further down. This is just the one we put up for the tourists. Now, which one is the real Ferry Bridge? Only the ferries will know, and unfortunately, they're not telling us. So, this one will do just fine. It's still a focal point. People stop here, leave mementos, take pictures. And just when you come here and visit it, just be careful that you park on the side. It is a main road without a speed limit. So there are people greeting the ferries, which of course you should do when you cross the bridge. But yeah, just be careful when you park here. It's very popular. Locals usually know that it's popular, so they're hopefully a little careful when they drive here, but not always. So, you know, just park nicely on the left and then um, snap away and you know just enjoy the place so I want to end tonight's episode with the view from the Steve Hislop Memorial up in Onken which is very easy to find it's right next to the electric railway sign that I'm standing behind here right now and I also want to end this episode on a topic that many people, me included, were hoping we wouldn't have to talk about this year. Yesterday, after I had recorded the little segment in Balaf, I noticed that I still had some time and I decided to try and show you another viewing spot. This one's called Orisdale Road or just Orisdale and it's a famous rally stage. It's a very quiet spot there. I wanted to show you, you know, what a away from the popular spots looks like and I still had time and I arrived in good time and everything was good until this happened.
48 minutes from Slavoni. He's in 20th position. Keep an eye on the youngster, Gareth Arnold, number 38. He's in the... Unfortunately, a rider died in yesterday's race. Raul Torres Martinez from Spain lost his life in an incident at Alpine Corner. And the position where, where I was, Orisdale, is the 16th milestone and Alpine is literally the next position. It's 300-400 meters down the road. We did not see the crash from that position. We didn't hear it. And if, if I had seen it, if it had happened there, I would never ever publish that. What you just saw in that video where the marshal is getting the call to put out the wave yellows, and they reacted super quick, you know, straight away they, they warned the next riders. And then what you saw were the police cars going down the course sometime after, under guidance from the clerk of the course and under instruction and guidance with the course car to carry out the investigation. Because once there is an incident of this, it becomes a police investigation, there will be an inquest sometime down the road. In a few months' time, there will be a little note in the Isle of Man newspaper giving us the result of that inquest. And until then, you know, it was just a, a incident during a TT, not just someone lost their life, but it is an incident under investigation. Um, one of the things I did, or the first thing I pretty much did after it was clear who it was, well, A, you know, obviously I saw the flags and I saw the police cars and um, the roads open car also turned off at Oristel where we were standing because the road where the incident happened um, remained closed for the investigation, so that it's it's quite rare that you you know get a video of the roads open car turning off and then going around literally went for a little field in the back roads and rejoined the course so i didn't publish any of that in yesterday's episode for or anywhere else yesterday for obvious reasons because you always wait to hear you know what what has happened officially until there's official word and then because the last thing you want is any loved ones to find out from twitter what has happened so you know you just wait for the official word the official news came out later that evening. So one of the first things I did when I saw the name confirmed in the news, um, I checked what the bike looks like and the number, and I checked if I have any footage of him going past our position, because the incident would have been seconds after he passed our position. And if I had, I didn't. I double-checked all my footage. I, I didn't record him. It was just I was just there for a few minutes. But if I had recorded him, I would hand that over to uh, the, org the race organizers and the police because it may be needed as part of an investigation because this is just immediately before the incident. I didn't record him. Um, I did record you know, that little the wavy flag thing and the police going by and the roads open car and that's it. And that's, you know, probably, I want to show you the whole, okay? Even also the bad side, but without being ghoulish or disrespectful, but it is part this unfortunately is a very sad part of the TT and I wanted to include it here uh, not just the clip but the topic because you know that I want to give you a, a balance and an overall view of the TT in the good and the bad sides and the sad sides and this is the sad side and everyone always hopes it doesn't happen unfortunately it has happened and even after 20 over 20 years now following this event and loving this event like I love no other event on earth I still don't understand what makes them race, but I know it's the riders' decision. I know we have a sometimes difficult to explain, some would call it morbid relationship, to death when it comes to the TT. You will hear this old phrase, he died doing what he loved. And I'm sometimes not sure who says it most, the people who think that's what we're supposed to say or the people really involved with the races, but you're certainly going to hear it. And yeah, I've settled, I've tried to understand it. But I've settled on, it's down to the riders. As long as the riders want to ride and take the risks, then these are the risks that come with the race. And to say the, the, the bikes have gotten faster, but the race, also the safety technology, the medical uh, backup system, uh, everything you know, was, ha has improved greatly. So yesterday the, the helicopter came in, for example, um, we only heard it, but 
it was there in minutes. I mean, minutes. They hadn't hardly started waving the flags that the helicopter was already landing. So the support system for TT, the safety, as far as there can be safety in TT, has gotten a lot better over the years. TT will never be safe. If TT was 100% safe, none of you would watch it. None of the riders would take part in it. The risk, the danger is an absolute part of it. We sell it. The riders seek it. They seek that thrill. And yeah, I could try and explain to you how, how we deal with, with that topic on the island. And I don't think I can. It's down to the riders to make that decision. And it's always extremely sad when this happens. But it is, as much as it pains me to say, a part of the TT. It's part of the risk. It also always makes me extremely sad and uh, it sometimes even makes me feel you know, really physically sick when that happened. Last year was, was extreme. Um, on the last day I just was like, I don't, I don't even want to watch anymore. But again, it's down probably to the writers. I don't, I don't know if any of us who, who, who aren't part of that world, that on-track world, can really you know, make any judgment calls or, or I don't describe it or try to understand it or explain it to someone else. I don't think we can. So I want to end on you know, mentioning it. Please don't forget those who, who paid the ultimate price, who didn't make it home. That's why I showed you the memorial wall as well. And maybe it's good to end on you know, a bit of etiquette when it comes to these, uh, these incidents. If you are witness to an incident, and I've said this in other videos, but it's worth repeating. If you do come across, if something happens where you are standing, um, and I kind of base this on what we were taught when I worked for the North One guys when we filmed it officially. Um, if you say you're at Quarter Bridge and there's someone comes down and gets the break point wrong and falls on his ass and the only thing that is hurt is his pride, then you know I don't think anyone will, will blame you for taking that video, sticking it on Twitter and you know sharing that. If you are a witness to a serious incident and where you can tell the rider is hurt or worse, um, do not post anything online. The last thing we want is friends and family finding out from Twitter that their loved one had an, an accident. Um, do keep the recording. If you are you know, there and you record an incident, do not delete it. Keep it, but do not publish it and contact the police because this will be needed as part of any investigation. Now, usually if there is an incident and you are still on the location, then you know, when the police comes there to do the investigation, they will already speak to you about it. But if you, if you want to leave, um, because you may be in shock, I had it last year, for example, the good German friends of mine were down at Argos Leap during one of the crashes, and they were, they were distraught. They were, you know, they, were, they were done for TT, okay? Um, so if you leave, contact the police after. And, and say, hey, I was there, I recorded this, can I give you the copy for it? Because they will need it for the investigation. So if you see someone's hurt or worse, please don't share it. Keep it, report it. If it's a minor scrap incident, something you know where you dust yourself off, um, I don't think anyone will, will, will really you know, think badly about you if you share that that's part of the racing action. But yes, so I can never under un fully explain the risk or why people take that risk or how we deal with the death part of it and you know people say oh more people die climbing Everest probably true I can only tell you that it is part of the races that the island and the people you do not take it lightly we don't you know trivialize this part of TT and yeah I can only you know give it to the riders and, and say let them make that decision they are the ones taking the risk and they are adults and as long as they want to do it, there will be a tiki. So, sorry not to, sorry to go on a bit, but it's not a topic I want to rush. And sorry to end on a, on a sad note, but it's part of the TT, and I would never ever deny that and hide it. So, that's all from today. There is, uh, as you know, no racing tomorrow. It's the second rest day. Um, I'll be out and about somewhere. There's, you know, quite a few things happening. So I will uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you again for watching, and I really appreciate it. And have a safe remaining few days of the CT, guys.